Hi guys, in this lecture we're just going to look at the introduction to planning and controlling for inventory. So I want you to just listen and um, picture yourself as part of this company, um, it's a retail company that buys and sells goods, um, so you don't have to take any notes, just um, picture yourself um, the person responsible for um, determining or controlling and planning for the inventory that they keep. So inventory is basically a the product that we buy and hold until we sell it. So say if you look at this top picture here, that's a, and it's an empty warehouse, so we don't have any inventory on the floor, and now picture our first customer coming in with his or her money, and they want to buy a product from us. Now what's going to happen if we go into the store and we tell them, well, it's empty, we don't have anything in, in stock? Well, they're going to first be very surprised how could that happen and then they're going to run very quickly with their money to the nearest customer or a competitor of ours and they might never come back so it's a big risk um, not having something available when the customers come and ask for it so then you might say well the picture at the bottom is a much better scenario where we keep everything in stock and we keep more than enough of it so then we'll never run into this problem of not being able to serve our customers. What is the problem with the picture at the bottom? So this is a very full warehouse, it's a very big warehouse, so obviously it's going to cost us in terms of space or rent. So we're going to have a very high uh, cost for rent for the warehouse space. But then there's also a risk of, say, a fire breaking out and damaging the stock or the stock could get old and since we have so much of it it could go out of date before we sell it so we'll have to take out some insurance so that's another cost and insurance is usually paid on the value of the stock so if it's if it's a high a large quantity like this the value is going to be high so the insurance is going to be high uh, then uh, what about the opportunity cost that's tied up in this inventory because we had to buy all of this so we had to pay for all of this uh, inventory so we had to either borrow money or we had to use our cash reserves and that could have been used for something else so we've got an opportunity cost that would be the cash price paid for all of this inventory times the interest rate or the cost of capital whatever we could earn on on the money elsewhere like interest that we could have earned in the bank so you can see this picture at the bottom is going to cost us in terms of holding costs or storage costs. So we would want to um, not go overboard in terms of storing inventory. So then you might say, well, these are two extremes. So we need to find some, some balance somewhere in between. So we could, close to the extreme of holding no inventory, we could order a very small quantity every day. So we could place frequent small orders um, so that we keep almost no stock but we at least have something when the customers arrive so um, th the problem with that is we're going to place frequent orders and each time we order something there's cost involved so we need to um, check the inventory someone needs to inspect it we need to um, handle and move the inventory of the the orders that arrive and we have to process the documentation issue delivery notes etc so there's costs involved and that is called ordering costs and we need to find a balance between the two extremes so that is where economic order quantity comes for in and you should have dealt with that in your earlier studies so just a quick recap why do companies keep inventory so the the example we mentioned in the previous slide is the transaction motive so we want enough inventory in order for, for the business to run smoothly and to service our customers when they come for the inventory but then there's other reasons as well so another reason could be precautions a precautionary reason um, and that is when we expect inventory to 
um, go out of stock for, at our supplies or we expect it to become scarce or unavailable in future, we might stock up on it in time so that we don't run into problems. Um, or if there's problems with the lead time, so like our suppliers might be running late or there's a strike somewhere, if we can anticipate that, we can hold precautionary inventory um, so that we don't run out of stock. And then the last reason is speculative reason or speculative motive. And that is if we expect the price of the inventory to increase in future, we can buy more of it now at the lower price. Um, so we basically speculate on the price of the inventory. So these are the, some of the reasons why we would keep inventory. Uh, and then the costs involved. So we've got the ordering costs. So if we have small frequent orders, so think of an, a situation where we buy inventory every single day, then our ordering costs are going to be very high. Or we could have a once of large order or very infrequent large orders and that will mean our average inventory will be very high and that will mean our holding costs will be very high and then we can use the economic order quantity in order to balance these two so the ordering costs on the one end and the holding costs on the other hand so we need to find that spot where um, the total of the ordering and the holding costs are as low as possible so before we move on, make sure that you revise your economic order quantity um, calculation. You should have done that in the past. And if you're uncomfortable with it, uh, please make sure that you, um, you can do it and understand it. Mm -hmm.